big shelf. So first off, I wanted to actually ask you about filming in Bath, A, because I'm a bit jealous, uh, but B, because it seems such a lovely place to film. Was that part of the appeal of, of taking on McDonald and Dodds? I think it was, it was part of it, yeah. I mean, it's a beautiful place to film. It's a bonus, really. Um, you know, the part itself is just so much fun to play and to build and create against this rather amazing um, backdrop, architectural kind of jewel in the crown, really. Uh, of uh, of England and yeah so and it provides this sort of wonderful you know typically English backdrop which is we know is just the perfect kind of uh, USP uh, for, for for the show so I mean yeah it was part of appeal but of course you know whenever you do anything you kind of you don't always get to see the place you That's film true. in Venice you don't always get to see a lot of it and particularly on McDonald and Dodds there's a lot of um, there there's a lot of material and, and you know we go rather delightfully through through Bath with myself and Tala, you know, and uh, so, you know, there's a lot of, uh, we're in most scenes, put it that way, yeah. Um, um, well, it is called McDonald and Dodds, so there are two detectives at the center of this, and your chemistry is really great. It's really warm and really fun to watch. What is the dynamic uh, between those two characters and kind of the working relationship with Tala to bring that to the screen? Well, I mean, it's not unusual in that you put a, a, a couple together that are opposites, and they, they are. And we've, that's like any construct is is a good construct is 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 the case. And um, but I think it, it, there's what happens in the second series. I think is that those two opposites have been clashing, and they always will. You know, they're come from completely different backgrounds. They see the world differently. But then, this is one of the joys of doing another series: is that you find points of contact and they both learn from each other they know they're stuck together they know that neither of them is going to necessarily change wholesale they'll but they because they like each other so much and care so much about them i think that sort of that's crept in that they realize how much they like each other and however different so that that's been really exciting and the the sense of humor is built i mean tyra and i have got this great sort of shorthand sort of comically and we know when to, where, where and when to turn the dial and how much of it. Um, so, you know, it, it's great that you've got a couple that is changing enough to evolve and understand, but of course they're, we're always buffeted and knocked around and changed by the characters and the people that we meet and the stories that we're subjected to, you know, the crime. So it's a very happy place to be because um, we as a couple of sort of as a, as a, uh, a dynamic duo are growing against, you know, ever changing backdrop. So it's a good, it's, uh, you know, it's doing well. Well, and initially she kind of like uh, the colleagues in the forest kind of label Dodds as a bit of an odd duck, although I don't really think he is. I think it's more that he just doesn't necessarily check all the boxes of kind of expected reactions and behaviors. What is hmm. it about him that kind of appealed to you from the get go? Well, it, Partly what you said. I mean, he's he doesn't observe the norms of human human behaviour necessarily. I mean, he's quite a shy, introverted person. Doesn't bang his own drum. Is uh, the opposite to a kind of uh, he's a kind of analog man in a digital world in some respects. But that, which I really like because he's forensic and he'd rather go to the library than go online. And you know that's uh, that's just joy. And so th there's a there's there's that, but to sort of confound that stereotype. At the same time, he's a very warm person and he, he has hope and he wants the world to be better and he wants, um, he wants Tala to have a full life, you know, he wants McDonald to be happy. Um, and I think he's had, despite his own disappointments with his own relationships and which we learn a little bit about as we go through the little hints about his wife and that he was married for, not very long and it didn't work out. It's all rather mysterious, it sounds dreadful, you know, something awful happened. But he just wasn't, didn't quite feel emotionally able to do it. And he, he's aware perhaps of his own emotional vulnerability, you know, and he's not a sort of man of the world, but it doesn't mean that he's not a, a good person. So, and I think that's one thing that McDonald spots. So, and brings out. So it, yeah, so that's, I love playing him because I'm playing with those things. But also, um, he's also a very sharp knife in the drawer. He's, you know, he's bright. So he does confound a little bit 
people who box you off as a as a particular type and a particular uh, person, and he's able, uh, with all the pot potential suspects, to be able to wrong wrong foot them. Sometimes deliberately, and sometimes knowing that his their perception of him is wrong, and he'll play with that and play the sort of the you know idiot savant uh, to some degree, whilst at the same time being a little bit one himself. So. There is, and the series has a lot of uh, kind of big name guest stars. And in the second series, you've got Rob Brydon um, and your two characters have a bit of a kinship, although Dodds doesn't necessarily see it that way. Um, yeah. But what was it kind of like looking in a figurative mirror and having Rob Brydon stare back at you? Well, I mean, what one has to say, it's such a really brilliant idea, isn't it? I mean, it's a great idea by Robert Murphy, the, our, 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 uh, Paul Murphy, our, our writer, who's just, um, you know, he can build these stories, which are so, not only are they intricate and they're original stories, so they're not taken from books. And so he's got, uh, uh, he can play with more contemporary themes, perhaps within the guile of uh, the guise of the genre. So it's, you know, it's a typical whodunit, but he's setting in the modern day and he can draw in all the things that are happening in, in the society it, within that genre. So it's not a kind of, a documentary of, about how we live now, but it can hint at that and it can draw people into that thinking, which I think is wonderfully strong, but he also has an ability to write great characters that come in and one of them is Rob Brydon's character. And what a great idea it is to have a character that is almost the spit of Dodds and Dodds not realizing it and the fun that everyone else can have uh, with that. So that's a good start straight away. And um, yeah, it was, it was, um, it was great and Rob, Bryden is such a versatile and brilliant actor. I, I hope he never watches this because I don't want him to know that because you, know, <laughs> you crack on about himself forever and anyone else giving him praise, you know. But we had a we had a really good time, and I think you know I can count him as a friend and uh, off the back of it. And so it was uh, it was joy to, and joy to play the comedy uh, with him, of which he is well versed, and a good chance for him to play something more serious with the comedy that he's inherently got. And I think that's one thing that appeals to, uh, it appeals to actors coming in that they can flex their muscles a bit, you know, uh, which, you know, which you see, uh, you know, um, in, in the, uh, in the, uh, with uh, Sharon Rooney in, in the, the, you know, she's able to really, and she was excellent and, and able to um, draw on all her abilities in this genre. I mean, because it's like a lot of, you know, light dramas with comedy that you can have a whole variety of different actors and characters that all can sit and work. Uh, it's not like a single tone of comedy that you get in other things. I'm talking about Green Wing or something like that, where there's a strand of comedy, which is brilliant. And everyone's in that boat, really. But this is, has a variety. So you can have a whole range of actors of different uh, experiences and, and backgrounds coming in. So now Rob was great and, and Chan Rooney and, and I'm thinking of all the others and Russia Stone and uh, all the other guys at Rupert Graves, you know, I mean, goodness me, what an amazing, Patsy Kensett, Martin Kemp, you know, there are a variety of backgrounds and, and it's, they sit, they have this, they're kind of this strange gang that sit in the middle of that, that first episode of the second series uh, rather delightfully. And the I, you mentioned Sharon Rooney's character, and I have to say that one really stood out in the second series because she has such a wide swath to do. But she's also that unsuspecting character, a bit like Dodds, where people don't expect too much of them, and yet there, there's so there's Dodds seems to me to get to play different aspects of his characters against all of these different characters throughout the series. Was that something that you looked at doing, or did it just kind of come organically through the through the stories? I think he comes through the stories, but we're always keeping an eye on that, you know. I mean, he's slightly, you know, it's a stag part, it's, it's, it's a hen party, the second uh, episode, and, uh, you know, that's dodges out of his comfort zone. It's easy to play the stereotype that there's, there's lots of women who doesn't know what he's doing, it's all too much. But, it, it, you know, it, 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 there's something else going on with his own background, his own relationships. He's not done well relationships with men or with women, you know, friendships and with, so the, it, that, that's an interesting uh, sort of a place to be. And yeah, she's, yeah, she, she sort of plays him a bit and, and tries to work him out and thinks she's worked him out. And he's, you know, he's constantly trying to, to work her out 
he knows something's um, different about her. And yet he's, he is led and easily, she, he's easy meat for her. Uh, but of course, you know, things uh, develop differently. Do you think of, of the cast members, uh, you and Tala and other cast members, who do you think would be the best real life detective? Do you think there's somebody who has some of those skills naturally? Or Tala, basically, yeah, yeah. Tala. Ta Tala often, Tala gets ahead of the scripts. <laughs> she just gets it straight away. And uh, so sometimes I play catch up. I mean, I, I have to say, you know, I'm, my defense is that I, I'm sort of half in character as dogs. But I mean, he's, uh, she's, yeah, she, she would be a good uh, uh, detective. And also I would probably say Rebecca in the second, the our wonderful director, we were spoiled by the directors we had this year. And uh, Rebecca, who is raw, she was but forensic with the script and forensic with her shots and, uh, it was very, she knew what she wanted uh, on the set. And, um, and that, that's an interesting place for us because when you do it, you know, the first series, you think you, it's, it's gone well and you think, you know, we need to protect and look after the relationship. The main thing is the relationship between me and Tyler. So you're trying to fight for that because, and the freedom and the, the spontaneity, I suppose, is the best word for that, and allow that to happen, whilst at the same time being led by different directors and giving uh, the show a new complex and a, a, a new complexion each episode, which is, again, a part of this great, that's why the genre does so well, I think, because you get different people coming in, uh, uh, different directors with their own ideas, and you have, you know, two actors who are in the middle of it, and well, four actors, of course, the gym and, and the guy, so, um, there's a regular team that want to be stretched. So it's a good, it's a good, it's good dynamic, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. But I think, yeah, Rebecca probably the best detective. Well, and you mentioned kind of the ongoing appeal of shows like this. You have Midsummer Murders, Line of Duty, all kinds of different types of the, you have the seedy underbelly, you have the kind of warmer detective shows. What is it that you think does appeal so much to people that they keep tuning in and, and wanting to see all these different variations on, on a theme, if you will? Well, yeah, well, it's, uh, it keeps on giving, doesn't it? And, uh, you know, I've done, I've done some of those, you know, I've done, I've done, all, I've done Line of Duty and I've done Midsummer Murders and I've, you know, so I, I, I've kind of done the gritty stuff and I've done the weird, the weird comedy stuff and, you know, uh, uh, Psychoville and stuff like that, you know, so, so I, I'm pride myself of having been able to sort of be quite an officiado of the crime, the crime drama scene, you know, so, and th but this one is 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 a is a light drama, and I think what's the thing about it is that you can laugh as well as be led, and I think that's it's a it's a delightful puzzle, and there's humour in it as well, and you're rooting for both of the characters. And I, I mean, I'm trying to think of other shows that have the kind of comedy that we have, but has a seriousness to it as well. You know, mm -hmm. the crime is usually a murder, and you know, you have to, uh, you know, be respectful of that. Um, and the comedy grows out of the, the, the misconceptions of Tara and I's misconceptions of each other or of other characters or people's misconceptions, usually of dogs. Um, so, uh, you know, the, 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 I think that is particular to this show. I think that's one of the things that has really uh, pushed it on in terms of audiences who absolutely love it and, and our numbers reflect that so you know we're very very pleased and it's a question that's often asked you know I think it is that it's the the, the marrying of the, the you know the, the, the comedy within within the genre. Well and the series has been picked up for a third series uh, as well yeah. do you have any ideas or any kind of wishes for where you want to see the characters go? Yeah I, I mean I know a little bit which I'm not going to tell you but, um, <laughs> Fair enough. I, I, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, we, and this isn't, I'm not sort of hinting at what might be happening, but, you know, I quite like, I love this idea, I'm probably quite sentimental, but I love the idea of McDonald and Dodds helping each other, you know, and, and him, him helping her, even though he's kind of useless in some ways of helping her be happy in her life and her boyfriend and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, she's at an age where she, or a time in her life perhaps, where she's thinking about families and long relationships and she, you know, in the backdrop of, of a very busy senior investigating officer and she's a high achiever. 
broken the mold of her, you know, from her backgrounds, her ethnicity, and you know, she's out there, and and yet she wants all the things that we all want, you know, um, outside of our career. So anything that can help her do that, it, it, it would be nice. And 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 likewise, she helped him, you know, get a girlfriend. <laughs> So He's out of his shell a bit, bit. yeah. Uh, yeah, get him out of his shell and learn a little bit more about what happened, you know, and I hope that is just rolled out every now and again, that the picture of his background, you know, he's, he's, he's abandoned by both his parents and was brought up by his aunt. So, you know, it, all, all that is interesting because, and, and when the show gets, it gets interesting because when the case is reflective of what is happening with, Dark Tyler and I, McDonald and Dodds, and I suppose that's what is always a great thing to see. That is, yeah, the crime is reflective, perhaps, or has elements that remind the audience and us as detectives, as characters, of of, of themselves. So you know that that that's a really good, and and that's set up again by uh, by by uh, by our writer. You know. Well, and you talked about um, the fact that you have visited the CD Underbelly and, and other roles, and you've played um, uh, not criminals. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, I've played some nasty, sort of, I've played suspects. some murder. Suspects, suspects is the word yeah. I was looking for. Uh, yeah. You've played suspects, you've played investigators, you've done Shakespeare, you've done comedy. W1A is one of my all time favorite shows. It's just a delight. But is there something that you haven't tackled that you'd like to tackle? Well, I say the juvenile lead, I suppose, but well, that's gone now. Isn't it? <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, Within reason, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm often asked, you know, I mean, doing, I tend to be playing real people. I've got a bit of a thing for playing real people. I've just finished playing another real person uh, to do with the climate gate scandal in 2010 in this country, and we sort of went global. But, uh, and that's playing a real person, Professor Phil Jones. And it's called the trick, but I mean, it, it and so and Harold Wilson, of course, and Christopher Jeffries. So I, I've got this. Uh, so I, I I've enjoyed doing that, and that is that may I may try and do more of that and see where it takes me, and see how I can push the envelope in terms of playing different types of characters and different backgrounds. But I think your question is more to do with genre, isn't it? And um, I suppose yeah. I just I don't know. I'm just happy to be led. You know. I suppose you know. I like complex characters and wherever I find them, I'll play them, whether that's comic or in a dramatic sense. That's great. On either side of the pond. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah exactly. Not picky, yeah. necessarily yes. location. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time today. That was great. I really enjoyed it. I'm really looking forward to the third series now that I've seen the second series. Oh, great. oh good. I'm yeah, I know you haven't even filmed it yet, but. Uh, yeah. yeah, we'll be starting oh. uh, at the end of August here. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so fairly soon. And yeah. hopefully this time, I assume the second series was filmed within COVID time. Yeah, we had all that. Yeah, we managed to film. We're so lucky in this industry that we continued largely to work. So certainly the second half, as we know it, of, of the pandemic. So yeah, we observed mm -hmm. uh, all the rules. It was, yeah, it was hard. But we, you know, well, and I like how you actually dropped it into the, the writers actually dropped that into the series as well, talking about in the second, second episode, people had to um, quarantine because they'd been where a COVID outbreak happened and things like that. It's really interesting to see how different shows have had to work it into yeah. to how they're yeah. working. Well, yeah, I think we'll, and that will continue because we, can, we can't, we can now in this country, you know, have more essays, more, you know, we want to see Bath full of people, tourists. And yeah, that's people, true too. You know. <laughs> so, yeah. That's great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Lovely to I, talk to you. And lovely yeah. to talk to you too. And a lovely pretty... backdrop. I'm very Oh, thank you. I try to make it a little bit more than just a, a blank. Yeah, I've gone uh, very plate. minimalist. I mean, I <laughs> that's a style. There's nothing wrong with that style. Yeah, I've got my cookbooks over there, but um, yeah, <laughs> it's not, not as nice as yours.